you know, yeah. integrate them together. Well, now yeah. we're, we've migrated all our own job advertising to the web, um, and you know, we've kept our customers. Yeah, brilliant. Now, we, t we had a few conversations about talent, and mm. we talked about the role of the CEO and the mm. HR director and the search partner mm. in that. Yeah. Could you just sort of share some of those conversations in terms of yeah. your view about talent and you know, what is the right role for HR and the CEO? Well, for me, uh, the CEO is critical to all talent. I mean, I think that I, you know, I spend a lot of time with people yeah. in businesses. And to me, talent is senior executive talent, but it's also emerging talent. So what's coming through? What's the pipeline of talent yeah. coming through? And so therefore, for me, um, no matter how brilliant your HR director is, I would never abdicate talent and talent management to an HR director. I think yeah. it has to be a really, really close partnership yeah. where the CEO is very involved in that because I think that is the lifeblood of the business, the people. Yeah. And um, so the way, you know, we've, uh, we, the way we look at it is we have um, things where we bring all our different businesses together. We do a leadership conference. Never, we've never done that before, but we've, done, we've run two now, yeah. which shows how our leaders compare with each other. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They look at each other. They kind of think, oh, that, that's good. I like that about mm. how he behaves or she behaves. Or It's very interesting how leaders behave in bigger groups. Mm. And I think also there's a lot of sharing of information. We bring case studies together. We bring outside speakers in. So we just have a day which is about leadership. And it gets people to be quite reflective mm. about what they're doing, how they're doing it, what they're taking back. Um, and, and, that, and that's very important because you then see leaders operate in an in a environment of, you know, it's yeah. quite a big environment to yes. operate in. Um, and we, do an we now do uh, an emerging leaders program. We run that uh, twice a year. Um, and that is all about spotting talent and taking 20 people out of 8,000. So that's quite small because mm. well, because we do it twice a year. We've now got an alumni, and we're going to build on that. Mm. And we will, even through an eco economic downturn, we will continue to do um, all of those programs. Um, and I think with the HR director, for me, it's kind of it, it's it's got to be about succession management, where I sound off her. So I say, I think that guy is a real rising star. What mm. do you think? You know, or that per I think that person could be moved from radio to to auto trader, what do you think? You know, or could that put so it's it's kind of like discussing. It's quite good to have an HR director you can just talk openly and discuss and be quite fluid with. Because I think that HR can often be a very structured discipline. Mm. And you need that. You know, you need the process, you need the policy, you need all of that being done. But for me, a group HR director yeah. is really about, you know, talent management crisis management, you know, yeah. often to do with kind of exits or senior yeah. level entries or, you know, it, it's that, you know, it's that yeah. level. And it, it's being a partner to the CEO. Yeah. It, a bit like the CFO is. Yes. You know, they have equally, you know, because the CFOs always seem to be the most critical partner and he or she is, I think, to the CEO. Mm. But I think the HR director, because of the wolf talent, has to have that kind of role too. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And, and uh, related to that, I mean, clearly you, you, you run a, uh, to some degree, a multi-generational workforce. Mm -hmm. um, could you just talk, I mean, you, clearly you've got a lot of guys uh, from very different generations, different mindsets as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could you just talk a little bit about, about that? Yeah, well, we, you know, we touched on kind of change a little bit to yeah. do with the transition from digital uh, yeah. to digital. And I think that um, actually what's interesting is it's not always about age. You know, it's yeah. not, so, so, so some people who are, you know, 40 plus get change yeah. very readily and easily because they don't feel as threatened. Mm. So I don't know if it's a kind of age thing, although yeah. in, in depending on what the sector is, yeah. that can be significant. So I think if you're a journalist, you've done things in a certain way, and you're, yeah, I don't know, in your 60s, yeah. Suddenly, to be told that you're multi, you're going to be multimedia, that you have to podcast and blog, you know, and write your column, and kind of do this and do that, that's quite a big thing. Mm. Whereas I think if you're coming through a multimedia world, so you've always been on the web and you've always downloaded stuff from, you know, videos, yeah. video, whatever, then I think that becomes a much easier 
thing to embrace. Yeah. Because you just see that as the way it is now. Because mm. I think if you've been working for 30 years on a, on a newspaper, it's really not the way yeah. it was. I mean, yeah. this was a one-section newspaper at one stage. We are now a multi-section, multimedia organization. It is such a massive shift. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, you know, I think there are there are issues to do with that. Yeah. Okay. And, and you, we mentioned briefly the downturn. Yeah. Now we're in the sort of middle of 2008 now, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, you've only got to open up the Guardian to see some yeah. of the things that are happening yeah. more widely. What's yeah. your view on the? Do you think this is going to be a, a prolonged downturn? No, I do. I, I think you know I've been. Um, well, I've just you know you just have to go to any of our board meetings at the yeah. moment, and it's the trading is quite grim. Yeah. But it tends to be our businesses that are exposed to advertising revenue. So, you know, in some of our businesses, that's not the case. So if you're predominantly digital yeah. and you're not exposed to ad revenue, so you've got conferences, events, festivals, other ways of making money, B2B, yeah. that's proving to be very resilient. But anything that is exposed to local or national ad revenue, radio, regionals, nationals, yeah. That is very, you know, it's very, is very affected at the moment. Yeah. Okay. And I don't see that that is going to get better in the next year. I think yeah. it's probably going to get worse before it gets better. Yeah. So I'm we're planning for two years yeah. of uh, of real tough trading, right. and we're looking at our cash reserves mm -hmm. because we have cash, but I think how we spend it now is going to be slightly different to how we planned to spend it six months ago. Yeah much more careful, more considered, yeah. you know, um, any acquisition will have to have only uh, a guaranteed return of quite a high target. Um, you know, so we're being far, far more um, considered, I think, yeah. about how we spend our cash. Okay. And, and, and in that environment that you're talking about, so mm. and I think a lot of CEOs actually have cross-sector of having that sort of view of a couple mm. of years downturn. Mm. How, how, do you, how do you lead in, in that environment in, in terms of leading teams? You know, yeah. they, because in many businesses, it's going to be, you know, survival in some ways, or yeah. you know, a much di more difficult environment. Yeah. So how, how do you how do you keep everybody going? Well, I I, mean, I think clearly, you know, you have to look to cost, and you have to yeah. do all the things that we all know you have to do. So every yeah. CEO knows what to do. Yeah. I think for me, the most important thing is kind of posture and language, yeah. because I think that it's very easy for directors to wander around looking glum, and yeah. head down and kind of beleaguered. Because it is, it's much, much tougher yeah. in, an in a climate like this. It's just everything you're doing is more difficult. It takes more time. Le leaders spend more time getting involved in operational issues yeah. in a downturn than they ever will do when things are going mm. well. And therefore, they're being sucked into stuff that is not about the future of the company, not about the strategy, not about the vision, not about the mission, you know, not about where they should be investing next. It tends to become very kind of focused, yeah. And I, and and I think that would be that that has to happen to an extent. But I think, from my perspective, it's really important to me to continue to spend some of my time thinking about what next, what's the future, how are we going to come out of this? Yeah. What are the things we're going to be remembered for over the last two years? Is it going to be for how we cut cost, or is it going to be because we've done a great initiative in America? Or yeah. We have launched a product well, despite a downturn. Yeah, you know it's what. Yeah, no, so understood. how you come out, and, and I think with that in mind, for me the most important thing is to be very clear about priorities, make some very tough choices, and then back them. So when yeah. you, so for me, digital will be the number one priority for me in GU in Auto Trader, so in the Guardian and Auto Trader yeah. particularly, and I, you know, I will be persuading, I don't think I'll have to persuade them, but I will be saying to the board, the group board, yeah. we must continue our investment plan in this, both in technology, in content, and in people, because the digital world is not stopping. Yeah. And we cannot afford to cut that. There will be other choices that then emanate from that. There will be other things we can't do as a result of continuing that investment, but we have to be really clear that is what we're going to do. Yeah. If that's it, you know, yes. whatever the choice is, yeah. uh, for me, it's about the clarity of purpose, the clarity of direction, and you know. But but going back to my point about how you behave as a leader, mm. Mm. it's incredibly important, I think, to behave confidently and to talk to people, to communicate more than you would ever do yeah. about why you're doing certain things and why you're not doing certain things. 